there's an element of fear amongst a lot of players and I think I totally understand that sometimes but I've not been raised to kind of have that sense of fear and you know if I think something's not correct then I'm going to certainly speak to somebody in the right way in the correct way so you know it's not about having having shouting from the rooftops but if something's not correct then you should do something about it and as we've seen you know sometimes teammates don't back what you're saying and that's okay and it just happens all the time because even um, if you look at Australia a few years ago we had to go on strike just to get a little bit more pay and I'm like this is something that constantly happens within mm -hmm. women, women's sport and I'm like more countries have done it America's done it everyone's kind of had to go on strike just to be able to get their opinion out there and you have to do it as a team sometimes because you get scared you get nervous to be able to stand out and have your own opinion and have that conversation without feeling either one you could get bullied throughout your team or people might not like you having an opinion so it's just kind of like this this up and down kind of situation like if you do speak out you might regret it or hopefully not regret it but just mm -hmm. other people might judge you on it does it have to be done as a team it doesn't have to be but you would like to have the full support of your team and I think that's one thing that we did it as a team when we uh, went on strike and it worked in our favor but I haven't had an individual player yet um, stand out and do their own thing throughout my country so I'm unsure about I, it. I also think a lot of it isn't necessarily to do with pay I think there's a lot of this surrounding about you know equality and when it comes to pay but it's not only about the pay it's about the facilities it's about what environments are being provided every day you know and what we're seeing now is the world's best players on show um, apart from me and Michelle not there <laughs> but yeah what we're seeing is the world's best players but I promise you now every single one of them have a story you know and it's not about sharing all these like sad stories but there is a lot of players that have been through a lot to get to this point and I think what people see are seeing now is they're playing in the World Cup and they're doing you know magnificently but a lot of players have been through a lot to get to this point when it comes to finances whether it comes to training fields facilities you know everything transportation transportation within your team like it's a, you would see most of the players the female players you'll be in economy flying we, we fly 30 to 35 hours every time we would travel overseas for Australia and we would be in economy so the male team they would be in business class but we would have to go in economy and do the exact same thing be in a camp for 20 days plus but we would never get treated as well as the men so there's more than just the pay but it there is like yeah the, everything it's that definitely Leandra improved said. yeah but it just needs to get continue to get better you know and what we're seeing now like I said is the the best players are here they're playing and you know I just encourage more people to you know read up about some of these people's stories because Hegerberg has come out and she's not playing and she's the best player in the world right now and there's a reason for that yeah, if you don't know the story of Ada Hegerberg, the Norwegian, not at this World Cup, plays the football for Lyon, won the Ballon d'Or this year, but decided it was two years ago, wasn't it, after the European Championships, that things weren't being done properly in Norway, and she made a stand on her own and said, if things don't improve, I won't represent my national team. Some people have been heavily critical of her for that around the globe. Others have been very defensive and said, if you believe in something, you do right. Yeah, you know, I think sometimes I think people just automatically think, you know, this is your country, it's the best honour, which it is, you know, playing for your country is an unbelievable honour. But, you know, that doesn't mean that you enable people to treat you not in the correct way, you know, and I think sometimes, you know, I'm all for, unfortunately, I want her to be here, but I'm all for her doing what she feels the right thing to do, because, you know, nobody knows what goes on behind closed doors. Nobody knows the real truth. And for her to not be there, there's certainly a huge reason behind that. Yeah, I, I applaud her for it, because hopefully with her doing this, it's going to change something. That's, that's the outcome that we all want. Jimmy. What if it doesn't change anything? What if this is all for nothing and she's missed out on the chance to play on the biggest stage? I just don't think that will happen. I feel like her federation has to get behind her or even the male team. I feel like something has to happen. Like she has to get the support because for the world's best player to do this, um, there's clearly something going on behind closed but doors. I also will say that for her, she's probably okay with if nothing comes of it for herself because she, from what I've heard, she wasn't happy in that environment, you know, and sometimes speaking from my experiences, when you're not happy in an environment, you know, it's not the easiest thing to do to just wake up and play football. You know, there's a lot of other aspects that go into playing football. So for me, I just think she's, I don't think she's going to regret this decision. I honestly don't. Why do you think she's on her own? Why isn't this something that the whole Norwegian team got together and decided to do? Honestly, I can't answer that question yeah, because we're not one. on that team. But, you know, I, yeah, honestly, I, guess, I can't yeah. answer that question. The only thing I would say was maybe they would just, they really wanted to be at the World Cup. Like, that's a big thing. It's like you train so hard for this day and to give that up, it's a big thing. But, but as yeah, we said, though, this has been going on for a number of years. It's not like she's just last week decided not to play. You know, yeah. it's an ongoing thing. And I think fair play to her for sticking to her guns because it's not easy to do that with a huge tournament like this. Yeah. 
Can I ask you, and this is a, maybe a, a delicate subject, but I know you'll give us an answer. At times in your career, you've had to speak out on issues when you felt things haven't been right. If you'd said nothing and kept your mouth shut, do you think you'd have played more times for England now? Yeah, I definitely do. But I can similarly speak from experience of when I have spoken out about how I felt and how, you know, any Ola Raluca was treated. Um, I'm OK with that and I can sleep at night knowing that, you know, I've spoken the truth and done what I thought was the right thing to do. And whether that's someone that's your friend on a team or not your friend, if you see something happening that's not correct, even though that wasn't necessarily to me at that particular moment, I think it's about doing the right thing. So for me, I know I don't live with any regrets. I can sleep at night. Yes, I'd love to play for my country again, but at the same time, it's not really something I think about. And honestly, I wish the girls the best of luck in this tournament. Is it important that you can look around the dressing room and look each other in the eye and know you've done what you believe to be right? Yeah, you know, I, I always think there's this um, thing, you know, everyone loves to post about, you know, we're together, it's the most together team and stuff like that. But sometimes, you know, there's a lot more that goes on in amongst the team that, don't, that doesn't get shared, which I, I completely get. But, you know, I think sometimes you just have to, you know, for me, yeah, I might seem like, you know, I have an opinion and stuff like that, but I'm not controversial necessarily. I'm just standing up for what I believe is right. And if I think, you know, I'm not perfect, but if I think something is incorrect, then I'm, I'm going to say it. I love that about you. Thank <laughs> it's you. It's nice because a lot of people don't. And it's, and it's, people don't like to have those uncomfortable conversations. I think that's something that happens a lot within the sport. It's just like everyone tries to keep quiet. Um, I spoke up about the pay gap within Australia and I was getting paid more, of, I was getting paid less than what it, I would have been getting paid if I didn't have a job in Australia. So I could have just been sitting at home, um, n not working and be earning more money from my government than what I was actually getting paid to play for my country, from my federation. And that was every Matilda at that time. So we're not scared, like I wasn't scared to speak up and I, and I believe that being a professional athlete, being a female athlete, we are entitled to the same things and we weren't getting them at that time. And it's definitely improved to this day. We keep improving every year, but there's still a long way to go. And do you feel quite happy, proud even in yourself that you know that what you did has improved the conditions now for an entire generation that will follow you? Most definitely. I think that's the best thing about my position as a footballer. I don't seem like I don't look back at my career and all my games. I look back at what I have done to change the game and being a role model for the next generation because that's more important in my eyes than anything and making sure that they have a better career and a better opportunities than what I had because that's what the girls before me did. Um, before my time, the girls weren't even getting paid. So it's grown from not having a contract to getting a little bit of pay, but hopefully in the next generation, it's gonna be a full-time job for them and they can become the best footballers possible. Is that more important that you, you write your place in history by doing what you believe to be correct. Hope Solo, I think she said publicly, the United States keeper, that she thinks had she been less controversial, she would possibly still be playing now, that she feels she was almost pushed to one side because, of, again, it was a similar situation in the States. Yeah, I mean, I can certainly relate to Hope in that sense. You know, like I said before, Hope Solo for me is the best goalkeeper ever, best goalkeeper in the world. And I think if she was, you know, able to be there, she would certainly help them. That's not taking anything away from Melissa now who plays there now. But um, yeah, I just, you know, like I said, I'm all for players sticking to what they believe in. And I think with Hope, you know, um, she's going to certainly be better off not being there. She's not able to be herself, you know, and I think that's the most important thing to her, being able to have an opinion and be herself. But for years, I mean, she played for the national team for, what, 15 years? And, you know, she is magnificent. So that doesn't mean now because she's speaking out to take anything away from what she's done for the country. And I think people have amnesia sometimes. They completely forget about what people have done in the past. I like what Michelle done. Yeah. And I think sometimes it's good to bring to light players that have paved the way for even players like me and myself, um, me and Michelle, to be in this position we are now. You know, and we'll hopefully continue to do that for the future generation. It, it does feel like we are at a real pivotal point for the women's game and that a lot of the things that are going on in public and behind the scenes right now other things that we'll talk about an awful lot more 10, 20 years from now. Yeah, you know, it's unfortunate, like yeah. I said before, that, you know, in the women's game, um, there's a lot of situations that happen, i.e. throughout this tournament, we've said, you know, Argentina didn't play for two years because of pay. You know, you spoke about your Matildas team not playing because of pay. The US women's national team have a, like, bargaining agreement every single year where they're discussing the pay, you know. So hopefully we'll get to a point one day where, you know, we can all be equal. That'll be the ideal world. Yeah. And we don't have these conversations about the finances because it's not only the finances that we want equal, we want everything.